All right, good afternoon. I'm Anthony Small. I'm the Executive Director of Music Preserves Foundation. Our mission is to educate and inspire our community through the preservation and presentation of music. And uh, yeah. today we both get to preserve, uh, preserve music. I'd like to talk a little bit about um, uh, the band Lit's place in Orange County music history, as well as present it to the fans here. I love the fact that the um, county is supporting and, and presenting the, um, the, the music to the fans. So, Very cool. yeah. So how are, how are you guys doing? I hope you preserved me one of those hats. Yeah. Absolutely, we can we can do that. You were kind enough to give me a slide bar hat the first time I walked into oh, your right into yeah. your place, so we absolutely will uh, will will do that. Um, right so on. yeah, so so um, we're sort of celebrating the 20th anniversary of your iconic album, A Place in the Sun. Um, it's been a long, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been crazy. a long time. But does the, it feel like it? It's the, weird how quick that 20 years flies by. Exactly, but how about the fact that even today it still has the cultural significance, the fact that it's in soundtracks, and even I think that you'd mentioned, uh, Jeremy, the fact that it's still streamed millions of times a week. Is that is that the case? It's insane. I mean, uh, you know, we don't really follow those statistics. Like, sure. You know, 20 years ago we used to know, like, every week they would tell us, oh, you sold this mini records this week because it'd come in a check or well it would come in a, <laughs> uh, in a report it's, yeah you get, you've never you seen your chart months, position and all that. yeah but um it's hard to you know to monitor how many times it gets played on spotify or pandora or apple music or whatever but there's people that calculate it and we were just told um a couple weeks ago that it's getting played like i mean four million times a week just on spotify and pandora alone yeah um, which I, can, I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. But um, and then now that there's, you know, it gets played on classic rock radio, it gets played on pop radio, it gets played on all these different formats. So it's almost on the radio more today than it was 20 years ago when right. it was a number one song. So yeah, I don't know, man. We're just like, we don't get it. <laughs> We're just. It's well, crazy. I'm, I'm tripping over your uh, yeah. the laundry basket. Yeah, that's a, that's how it is backstage instead of on stage. Glamorous, man. man. Yeah, exactly. So so um, before I move on, so I had heard rumors, read a little bit of something about the fact that because it's 20 years, that next year, with the fact that a place in the sun turns 21, and that at that time in your lives, in our lives, we can you know drink, go to Vegas, do all those kind of things. That that, that right. uh, uh, rumors of a tour with you know like bands and bands from your scene. I'd like to get a little snap shot from you guys of your perspective of the Orange County scene and how that type of music and that type of energy came from uh, a bedroom community. It's well, the craziest thing about it is there were, you know, we grew up in this band, like we started really young. Yeah. So early on, we were doing most of our shows up in LA, like on the Sunset Strip and, and playing a lot of those clubs because we were too young to play most of the Orange County venues because um, most of them were, were bars. They weren't really music venues. Um, so a lot of the bands that you we all know today as Orange County bands weren't there really wasn't so much of a at least not where you know where we were from yeah. much of a scene we didn't really know a lot of those bands until we started touring doing MTV stuff yeah. um, until we actually hit so like the come up was very lonely for us in Orange County as far as all, uh, musically right. um, but it, but once it started once we started getting some love and and we started meeting all these bands it became a community and we like we're like damn where were you guys where you guys been you know I think, yeah. I think that's also one of the reasons that everybody that broke out of Orange County sounded completely different True. because we weren't all hanging out on a strip together seeing each other's bands play every Friday and Saturday night and hanging out with each other every single day. Right. I mean, some ba some bands were tight like that. It was that, a punk but, rock scene for sure. But um, we didn't, you know, we just had each other, and so the songs that we came up with weren't being influenced by anybody else from Orange County. So I think, but yeah, like AJ said, I mean, the first time we met the No Doubt guys was the first day we went on tour with them, wherever the first show was, I don't know, New York somewhere. Right. First time we ever met Mark McGrath was backstage in Washington, D.C., at a big festival that, and yeah, that's so, the small world phenomenon right like yeah. no matter where you go you see those people that you, that you know that are pulling in the same direction hopefully so so um so um if i could also talk about recently um you know uh, the evolution of your songwriting and the songs and and incorporating nashville as well and in, you know into it um quite a few years ago uh at songwriter showcases that our, our mutual friend frank giampolo uh had had put on you were always very good and being as as to being the you know the mentor to the group and there were weekly wow. songwriter showcases and it was very inspiring you know to be for me to be able to 
to sing a ridiculously high harmony to a song that you that you wrote, you know, or to get some feedback from you or Chuck Cannon or you know those the, you know th those types of guys, and then to see the fact that you know you had already uh, dipped your toe into Nashville, but now you guys are there and you know been uh, produced by Butch Walker and those kind of things. Could you talk a little bit about that? I know it's still lit, but but uh, that evolution is what I'm talking looking for. Well, I mean, Butch goes back to the like AJ was saying earlier with the Sunset Strip days when we, we you know that was sort of like our, our college roots. if right. you will and Butch came from those days too and that's how we got to know each other uh, and became friends over the years as our bands continued to do you know bigger and better things yeah. or whatever um, and uh, Corey Crowder is a big Nashville producer he mm -hmm. produced our last record we've been going to Nashville for a lot of years Yeah, that's where we that's kind of our place you know some people they go to Paso Robles to unwind, or they go to Maui and um, Joshua Tree. They have or right their here spot, in Dana Point, you know, yeah. or or they've got their cabin up in Big Bear, and they go there. And you know, for us, Nashville is where we go to be creative. Um, and over the years, it's been, geez, 15 years now. Yeah. It's just become part of our who we are. And um, somebody somebody asked me one time. They said, like, what what made you all of a sudden start writing country songs? I'm like. I didn't really just I didn't make a decision to just start writing country songs it just they started sounding more like that yeah and um, the reality is we've been writing songs in Nashville for longer than we were writing songs in Anaheim for when a place in the right. sun came out you right. know? yeah you had the publishing deals and you know you were um, also writing these you know these hit these hit songs for for other country artists as well Jamie Johnson that you know uh, chase etc so yeah, I mean, it, we just like to tell people, you know, it's still it's still lit. It's still you know, my guitar is still down here, and yeah. AJ still sounds like it's still. I mean, it's it's still the same guys, and it's the same band, it's the same energy on stage. Yeah, we just we just create music a little bit differently these days, and and um, we've lived a lot more life too. I mean, 20 years we're celebrating. We can't wait to get out there and play yeah. a place in the sun front to back. Do a 21st right. anniversary. It's, it's definitely worth celebrating where we come from. Um, and it is a very big part of who we are today, but it's also, it's nice to grow. We get older, we, you know, we've had kids, we've had, we've had kids go to college now, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've done a lot of living. So I think a lot of the country music. Yeah. Um, I, I, that, I, I saw, I, I saw that you weren't crying. I was crying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my yeah. son, my son is studying abroad as well. So it's that same thing. It's because we yeah. love him. Right. Yeah. So my daughter's so, a senior this year. So there, that's, that's, you know, there, about, there, there you go. But, um, you know, kind of, uh, kind of lost, lastly, just to close the thought on the significance of Orange County um, music history and the fact that Music Preserves is sharing it in the schools. We're starting with Capistrano Unified School District. We're supplementing U.S. history with a cultural perspective of American music history, talking about the birth of the blues, moving up to the industrialization, rhythm and blues, country, and then the West Coast. So, it, you know, you're Sorry. our first chance to talk about, about West Coast rock and roll and yep. and we we really appreciate your time oh, and 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 i've appreciate always you appreciated that. your time and, and direction awesome well, man. You, man we appreciate what you're doing the kids deserve it man it's american important. history is great but it gets it can get a little boring throw some music in the mix and make kids excited to go to school you know yeah it's not just the presidents and the wars right i mean <laughs> and for a lot of kids too music is the thing that connects them to the world and and yeah. to their to emotions and their feelings and you know, not every kid's great at sports, not every kid's super smart, but almost every one of us loves a good song, loves music in some way, whatever style it is. And, and when, you're, when you're young, you can identify with an artist or a genre or a, a band or a movement, and, and, and then you feel like you're part of something. And, not, right. and that's really important because not everybody feels like they're part of something. And yeah. Music did that for us. Music did that for you know, for our parents. And, and um, so I think it's a great thing for kids to have in school. It's so important. And for so many years, we've been stripping it down and stripping it back. And yeah. anytime they need to cut money, they seem to cut it that's, on that's, the things that are the most important for kids to grow. Absolutely. So that's love what, what you guys for. are doing that, man. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. That's what we're fighting for. Well, um, you know, we certainly appreciate the fact that you've been the soundtrack to uh, to not just Orange County, but, uh, you know, for a lot of music lovers, um, you know, lives and, and, and certainly mine, mine included. So um, Anthony Small with Music Preserves here with the boys from Lit and Orange County rocks.